Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Colleges That Change Lives Virtual College Fair. We have a killer lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. But before I turn it over to them, I do have a couple of housekeeping items um, to address with you. Number one, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you this evening. But they do know that you have some questions and they want to make sure those questions get answered. So at any time during the presentation, you can use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to type in the college or university that you're addressing your question to and then also your question. It's helpful if you note the college or university in your question so that they know who um, you're directing your question to and they can answer appropriately. This is a really fun way to learn about colleges and institutions, maybe that you've heard of and maybe that you haven't, and there are more sessions tomorrow. So we hope that you enjoy tonight's presentation, but please sign up for more sessions that are happening tomorrow. This session tonight um, and all the sessions happening tonight will be recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash ctcl. So before I turn it over to our presenters, we do have a short video for you to watch. So here we go. Hi, I'm Ann Morano, Executive Director of the Colleges That Change Lives. Congratulations on starting or continuing your college search, and thanks for saying yes to spending some time with us during the virtual college fair. I'm so excited for you. Take a deep breath. You got this. One thing you need to know about all of the colleges that change lives is that we are fiercely committed and dedicated to the individual student, that's you, and a student-centered search. You really matter to us. So think about what you value and what you're looking for in your college experience. What will make you happy on campus? What sorts of experiences are you looking forward to having in and outside of the classroom? What sorts of clubs and organizations do you wanna get involved with? Do you wanna start? What sorts of folks do you wanna be surrounded by? people who have similar backgrounds, similar viewpoints and opinions, or people who come from different backgrounds who have different opinions and viewpoints. What kinds of conversations do you wanna get involved in on campus? Again, in and out of the classroom. Which ones do you wanna start? Which ones do you want to spill out into the hallways after class has ended? What sort of physical environment are you looking forward to? Do you want to be in an urban metropolitan area or further away in what I call a more rural, nature, green stuff kind of space? How close do you want to be to home or what you call home? Do you want to try something completely different in a location that's brand new to you or do you want to stay a little closer to what's familiar? If it matters to you, it matters to us you'll have an opportunity to ask questions in the chat during each session. So make sure you show up as yourself, be yourself and get those questions answered. The colleges that change lives are 44 distinctly different liberal arts institutions located across the United States. Although they are all different in terms of their academic offerings, their personalities, their vibe on campus, sometimes even their single gender focus or faith affiliation. They all share a commitment to you and to the liberal arts because we believe that no matter what you wanna study or what you think you want to do once you have graduated from college, the liberal arts provides you with lifelong learning. and will make you a more effective communicator, resourceful problem solver and global citizen. And we think that's super important, especially for today. If there are questions that you have that don't get answered, or we can provide additional support or be a resource for you after the fair, throughout your college search and application process, don't hesitate to reach out to any one of the member colleges or myself. And if there are schools that you'd like to learn more about or schools that are not represented at the virtual fair, be sure to check them out at our website, ctcl.org. Good luck, and thanks again for being here. 
What a great note to start this program on. And I'd like to first introduce you to um, the first college that's presenting tonight, St. Olaf College. Roy, take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you so much, Courtney, for that introduction. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me okay. Uh, I'm super excited to meet with everyone this evening. My name is Roy Katie Kimball. I use he, him pronouns, and I am an assistant dean of admissions at St. Olaf College. St. Olaf College is located in the historic river town of Northfield, Minnesota. We're about 45 minutes south of the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. And it's a really great place to go to school. Uh, Northfield, Minnesota is 5,000 people, or sorry, 20,000 people in the town of Northfield, and then 5,000 college students at St. Olaf College and Carleton across the river. So it's a very college friendly place to go to school. Uh, a lot of beautiful little shops and small businesses. It's a picturesque Main Street town uh, in Minnesota. So who we are, uh, St. Olaf is a lot of Minnesotans, but actually more than 60% of our students come from outside of the state of Minnesota. We are represented by all 50 states as well as 95 plus countries. Actually, this year we have 97 countries that students are coming from. And I think that that really speaks to what Anne was talking about in the video, uh, the ability to be at a college where you are surrounded by people with various different backgrounds, life experiences, ideologies. There's always a lot of great conversations going around at St. Olaf among many different academic topics. This is a little profile of who we are, the demographics of our student population. We're almost a quarter students of color, uh, domestic students of color that is. About a fifth of our students are the first in their family to go to college. We love uh, serving first gen students. Also about 33% of our students come from low income backgrounds. So we are a uh, need based institution. That means that we're committed to meeting your financial need if you're accepted to St. Olaf. We are a female heavy campus, about 56% female, and we do have a very healthy LGBTQ population on our campus as well. St. Olaf is what I would like to call a big little liberal arts college. While we have a lot of the classic liberal arts majors like history, biology, uh, sociology, we also have a lot of pre-professional programs that you might see at a bigger university. For example, we have social work, nursing, exercise science, business management, and engineering. Also, we have a very unique academic calendar. We have a fall semester and a spring semester where you'll take uh, four classes at a time, but we also have a January semester where you will take one class focused very heavily in a specific topic area. Uh, this is also a really popular time to study abroad, and I'll talk about that in a second. Because we don't have any graduate students like the other colleges here on this video, we are uh, able to provide research and internship opportunities that might be taken by grad students at a larger university. Because of this, you get a lot of experiences that allow you to set yourself apart from other people when you're applying for jobs, graduate school, working in a lab, et cetera. Almost all of our students will have that kind of experience when they're on campus. To that end, we also send a lot of students to get doctoral degrees, whether that be academic doctoral degrees, MDs for future doctors, or JDs for future lawyers. Uh, so we really do want to set students up for success through critical thinking skills, engaging across different cultures and belief systems, and really diving into career advancement as well. And I'll talk about that in a second. We are the number one liberal arts college in the country for the number of students who study abroad. Uh, about 75% of our students will study abroad at least once, if not twice, while they're at St. Olaf. We don't only have study abroad programs in areas like language and the humanities. Uh, math, science, all of these areas are well-developed programs at St. Olaf. We also travel to over 41 different countries around the globe. And because of COVID, uh, we're hoping to open this program back up in spring of 2022. We do hope 
that students gain language skills while they're on their programs, but fluency is not required. Uh, and also we do hope that students do not take their time abroad for granted. Uh, we want to respect the places that we're visiting, so we do push for a lot of cross-cultural immersion as well. St. Olaf is a residential campus. That means that almost everyone will live on campus all four years. This is a picture of our pristine dining hall on campus. Uh, you'll see professors meeting with students over a cup of coffee, uh, the varsity basketball team celebrating a big win, maybe a choir section, uh, talking a little bit after a rehearsal. This is kind of the lifeblood of St. Olaf's campus. All of the community centers that we have are centrally located. Uh, so you know that something is going on and you wanna be a part of it when you're here at St. Olaf. We're also building a brand new residence hall this year and a new townhouse complex, which will hold some of our language immersion houses. If you're interested in living in a Spanish speaking, French speaking, German speaking house or something like that. We also have houses for the LGBTQ community to have a space, uh, multicultural students, and uh, we have a really cool sustainability house as well. And we're ranked seventh in food. So if you love food like I do, you'll find a, a great place to hang your hat at St. Olaf. The other thing besides study abroad that we're nationally known for is being accredited in all four major fine arts. So dance, music, theater, and studio art. Whether you want to be marginally involved in college or extremely involved in any of these areas, you can get money to do uh, any of these things at St. Olaf uh, without having to major in it. So we have chemistry, physics, double majors who are traveling internationally with the St. Olaf Choir. Uh, we have sociology majors who are in a comedy troupe on campus. And then uh, math majors who are showing art in one of our two art galleries on campus. So we really do focus a lot on students bringing those passions with them when they come to school. Career development is something that we take seriously as well at St. Olaf. We know that you are coming to get educated, uh, but just as well, we want to set you up for success in your journey after college. So St. Olaf has uh, a great pot of money to allow students to have paid internships during their summer experiences during college. So you could get $2,000 to go work at a tech startup in San Francisco. Uh, you could build shoes as a cobbler in Paris, France, uh, or you could go do marine biology research in the South Pacific. The sky is the limit, and there's probably a St. Olaf alumni who's interested in the same things that you are. Uh, also, it's not just big companies coming to look for OLEs, uh, but also a lot of nonprofit organizations, governmental agencies. Uh, really, we have 11 different career coaches who span the gamut of academic and career interests, and they love to work one on one with students during their entire four year period on campus and as an alumni. Finally, just some changes that we have this year. Uh, we are increasing our academic merit scholarships this year. Uh, they're up to $24,000 to $32,000 for merit scholarships. We also have service leadership scholarships that can add up to $6,000. Those two you don't have to apply for. You're automatically considered for when you apply to St. Olaf. And then, like I said, regardless of whether you want to major in the fine arts or not, you have the opportunity to get two to $15,000 a year in great fine arts scholarships at St. Olaf. We also want students to be able to take academic risk. So regardless of whether you get a B or a C at St. Olaf, that is the scholarship amount that you will get all four years. You will not lose that uh, if you take academic risk. So if you want more information, uh, feel free to reach out, and I'm really glad to be here with you this evening. Thank you so much. Roy, thank you so much to you and St. Olaf College. Next up, I have the opportunity to introduce to you Hendricks College. Take it away, Beverly, whenever you're ready. Thank you so much, Courtney, and welcome students and parents that are on tonight. 
First and foremost, I want to say I'm celebrating you. I'm celebrating you. Hendrix is celebrating you. And the 44 colleges that changes lives are celebrating you. And that's what I want you first to take away from the presentation tonight, that each of us are so unique in the type of students that come to our campus. And one of the things that we've all agreed upon, what, what makes our campuses so brilliant and resilient and amazing are the individual students across the country. So I wanted to take a moment and applaud you um, as we get started tonight. I'll go ahead and share my screen. I'm really excited about the opportunity to just share a little bit about Hendrix. But before I get started in sharing about Hendrix, I want to do a little exercise. So hopefully you either have your cell phone, you have something that you can write with or take notes with um, from uh, this presentation tonight. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to write down three words that someone has said about you, you've thought about yourself, or you would like to, to, to be or to do. And I want them all to be positive, of course. Because from this journey that you're taking tonight, even just coming to listen to the four of us talk about our universities, I think the most important that it starts with you. Everything that you're doing starts with you. It starts with what you believe about yourself. And then from there, how do you find the university or college that fits who you believe that you are? So again, take a moment. I want you to write down those three words and as you go through this process, even listening tonight, as we're talking about our institutions, something's going to kind of jump in your spirit and you're going to go, oh, that's what I'm looking for. Um, or, oh my gosh, wow. If something like that happens tonight, write down the university that happens when you, when you hear that or when you experience that. What you're starting to do is find the fit. Right. I have so many students who come by Hendrix table and they say, where are you located? Where's Hendrix College? And I laugh because we don't put the name of our, our school or the city and state where our school is located because we want students to come up and then discover Hendrix. So we're in Conway, Arkansas. And if you're in Texas, it's only five hours drive from Dallas. If you're outside of, of Texas, it could be a flight. A, a flight uh, to campus, maybe a two hour flight, but not too far. I really want you to think about Hendrix when we talk about, or when we think about our students, we say to the students, it's about you. It's about you. So when we start with our students, we don't really have them declaring their major until they're rising into their junior year. If you go to our website, you'll see a quote and it says, unto the whole person. And what Hendrix is dedicated to do is to literally help you discover who you are. Now, how are we going to do that? We want you to be engaged on our campus. We want you to be engaged with our professors. We want you to be engaged with other students on campus. We actually want you to be engaged with our administrators and our faculty and our staff, because we understand that when students go off to college, they're not just going off to get a degree or become stats. They're going off to, to grow and to change and to experience life. And one of the things for Hendrix, if you go to our website, you'll see a lot of the, the interesting things that our students are involved in in our Odyssey program. And to me, uh, I say this about our Odyssey program, what is it that you would like to do to impact the life of yourself, someone around you, the community, are the world. And at Hendrix, the sky is the limit. We've invested over $4 million to help you answer that question. And so our students, every student gets the opportunity to connect with a professor and connect with an idea and have funding to see that idea established. I'll just throw this out and you'll have to reach out to us and get the answer to it. Do you like chocolate? That's all I'm going to say about that. But I'm going to have you thinking, and I want you to reach out to us and say, Miss Wheeler said, do you like chocolate? What was she talking about when she was talking about the Odyssey program? 
do you like Marvel Comics? I'm throwing that question out. I want you to find out the answer about why did our students get an opportunity to go to Comic-Con to study the actions of participants who attended that conference. I'm just throwing out a couple of hints to you tonight because I want you to check out Hendrix and see how our students are being engaged citizens outside of the classroom. So what do we do? We make the world your classroom. We shape you in the unique views and what you're interested in and what you're thinking about doing. And we want our students to constantly discover every day, every day, something new and something brilliant, something they didn't know about, not just knowledge, but with people. And so for me, if I were to ask you to think about Hendrix, I would add community. So I said unto the whole person, I said Odyssey, and now I'm saying community. So I want you to think about what is it you want your community to look like in all the different areas, not just in the classroom, but in the residence halls, when you're walking across campus, when you're having a conversation with your professors, when you're just by yourself, just meditating in your residence hall, what are you thinking about and what do you need? And how can these universities, all 44 of us, offer you what you need? And that's what you're doing, you're on a journey. And then ultimately to me, I think we wanna challenge you. We wanna challenge you beyond your comfort zone and how does Hendrix do that? We do, we do that within the classroom. We do that outside of the classroom and it's ongoing. It's, it's literally when you start at Hendrix as an incoming freshman, we are going to introduce you to our, to our professors. And then from there, the relationship in the community in order for you to grow. I wanna encourage you to think about engaged learning in the community. So our Odyssey program, the Murphy program, and the Miller Center program, our office and department. These are just areas that I'm throwing out. One of the things that I know about Hendrix is that we're so focused on the individual student that we don't want to just throw out a presentation to you tonight, but we want to hear from you. We want to talk to you, and we want to know who you are first, and then introduce Hendrix to you. So remember I said we're in Conway, Arkansas, right? We want you to come visit because we think it's important. And we want you to, to know that with all these stats, the 1,100 students, the 10 to 1 student-faculty ratio, uh, the 48 states that are represented, and then the 16 countries, all of those are numbers. But those numbers are made up by you and the individuals that are engaged in conversation and community in order to discover who they are and to the whole person. Um, of course, I'm sure we have some seniors on here. So I want you to think about upcoming, upcoming deadlines. Ultimately, November 15th to get your application in. We're on the Common App. You can add Hendrix if you'd like to do that. Uh, we're, we're, we're test optional. And what I like about that, we were test optional pre-COVID because we want to focus on you. We know you're more than just a number. We, we know that even with your grades, it's more than that. So Hendrix wants to know who you are through your essay, through a recommendation, if you'd like to submit that. And ultimately, I want to encourage you to connect with our admissions counselors in your territory. So I'm going to end with this uh, quote to you, unto the whole person, unto the whole person. Um, I don't want to talk about our amazing tuition advantage program that we have started. Uh, we're encouraging you to apply for financial aid by October 1st. Those are all excellent things to think about. But tonight, I want it to be about you. Tonight, if you leave um, from this presentation and you go, what did Ms. Wheeler talk about? I want you to remember the quote unto the whole person. I'm going to say that through all my slides. We would welcome you to visit Hendrix. I think it's beautiful right now. The changing of the leaves are there. The temperature is just right. One of the things that Arkansas is known for are all the trails, the biking trails and hiking trails that are available. And we would like to introduce Hendrix to you first by getting to know you. So I wanna thank you for coming and listening tonight. And again, as I started, 
I want to applaud you. I want to applaud the parents and also students for your resilience and your brilliance as you go on this journey, finding the school that is the right fit for you unto the whole person. Thank you so very much. Beverly, thank you so much to you and Hendricks College. I told you guys this was a really fun way to explore colleges and universities. Um, we've heard from two great ones and we have two great ones left to go. Um, next up, you'll have the opportunity to hear from Eckerd College. Jacob, take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you so much. Hang on one second. And present. So hopefully you all see that. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Jake Brown. I'm the Director of Admission at Eckerd College located in sunny St. Petersburg, Florida. So we're right in the Tampa Bay metropolitan region. Many of you, it's a direct flight to Tampa Airport, Tampa Airport and about 20 to 25 minutes away. So St. Pete is a peninsula on a peninsula. Um, we have the Gulf of Mexico on one side and Tampa Bay on the other. So this is our campus right here, 188 acres for about 2,000 students. Our geographic reach um, is coming up right here. And so I think one of the most interesting pieces is that about 17% of our students come from the state of Florida. So we're very much a national liberal arts and science institution. Uh, 48 different states are represented in our study other countries. One of the most interesting statistics, and I think this becomes very telling of the type of uh, community we have here at Eckerd, is that on average, our students are traveling a thousand miles from home to come to Eckerd. The national um, average for distance traveled from home to a college campus is about 200 to 250 miles. So Eckerd students tend to be a little bit more adventurous. They're willing to go four to five times that average distance traveled, and they typically are the only ones um, coming to us from their high school. So if you are thinking to yourself, maybe I want to go a little bit farther away, maybe I want to go um, uh, somewhere not many other people have been, might be a good fit for you. We're also very residential. So 83% of our students live on campus. Uh, many of our students live there all four years. One of the other unique features about Eckerd, and you heard a little bit about this from St. Olaf, is that we have a 414 academic calendar. So this relates to the number of classes you will take in a given academic year. So four courses in the fall, four courses will be taken in the spring, and every year you will do a short term where you will take one course, um, do an intense um, study of one course for three weeks. Sophomore, junior, and senior term, that first happens in the month of January for what we call winter term. And you can take a winter term course on our campus, or you can take an Eckerd course with Eckerd students and an Eckerd faculty member in one of 25 different destinations abroad. So think you, you or imagine you could be studying business in Cambodia or language immersion in France or Spain or Italy or studying environmental studies or marine science in Cuba or Rotom or Honduras. The difference, however, instead of 414 fall, winter, term, spring, in your first year, it will look more like 144. And for our new students, our first year students, come in three weeks before our upper class students for autumn term. Well, it is August in Florida. It doesn't feel like autumn yet. It doesn't even feel like October right now. But this is an opportunity for our students to come three weeks before the upper class students and take their first academic course. The course itself is not major specific. So if you're thinking about a few different majors, if you're completely undecided, or if you think you may know, this is an opportunity to take one course for those students every day for three weeks to start to really um, get accustomed to academic expectations of college work. Of course, it's complemented with orientation activities so that you can learn a little bit more about St. Pete and explore the area. You can, uh, help you know learn what it means to be healthy and safe on a college campus how to be successful how to take advantage of social and co-curricular opportunities as well as your academic requirements and of course to figure out where all the buildings are located the upper class students come in it's time for you to take four courses the faculty member who teaches that autumn term course becomes your first mentor. So this person is there to guide you and the other 19 or so students from that autumn term course throughout your first year. 
and go away after the three weeks are done. In fact, they stay with you for a foundation course we call human experience. And that person is there to make sure they're transitioning well to college, to talk to you about major exploration. Yes, to help register for different courses, but is really there for you um, as a guide through your first year as a college student. Once you declare your discipline or declare your major, which can happen as early as the spring semester of your first year, up to the end of your sophomore year, you then have a mentor within your field of study. And so you will have someone who will work with you um, on research opportunities, on studying abroad, on networking with other Eckerd alums who may have been mentored by this faculty member. So for us, that mentoring, aspect, that mentoring piece is the one of the most important relationships that you can develop um, during your, your undergraduate years at Eckerd. This is a list of our majors and programs. We've got about 42 different academic areas of study. Some of our most popular programs and majors, marine science, for instance, our flagship program is arguably uh, one of the strongest marine science undergraduate programs in the country. We also have a very strong environmental studies and animal programs, as well as international relations and global affairs um, and psychology, biology. So that kind of rounds out the top five. The other nice thing about Eckerd is of course our Florida location in St. Petersburg. So this is a photo of campus. Yes, we have our own beach, St. Pete Beach, Fort DeSoto, they're only about 10 minutes away, um, but this is a great place to catch sunset, put up a slack line or hammocks. You may also see a dog in this photo. This record is known as the most, or the pet friendliest campus in the United States. So bring your dog, bring your cat, bring your lizard, iguana, you name it, we've seen it. Um, and then on the other part of campus is our waterfront facility. The waterfront facility um, really complements recreational opportunities. So kayaks, paddle boards, wakeboards, boats, sailboats, you name it, we have it there and it's free of charge, free to take out and get out onto Boca Ciega Bay or the Gulf of Mexico. But it's also so many of our courses, not just in marine science or environmental studies, will take use of our waterfront facility, get out there on the boat, perhaps the beach catamaran, um, and explore the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, thirdly, it's also service oriented. So one of the most unique leadership opportunities um, that I can think of on college campuses is our XR program, which stands for Eckerd College Search and Rescue, where our students are trained to respond on average to 500 to 600 distress, maritime distress calls in a given year. And that provides a service to the Tampa Bay uh, region. We have a land-based version for Eckerd students of ESER, so Eckerd College Emergency Response Team. Um, if you're interested in perhaps getting some first responder training, maybe if you're interested in going into a medical field. These are application requirements. So common application as well as the Eckerd application. We are test optional. Yes, we were for last year. Yes, we are for this year. We're also test optional for next year. And by that, I mean we're truly test optional. So scholarships, um, are based solely on GPA. There's no program requirement for, um, to have test scores. Uh, and then we need a letter of recommendation. We're waiving the application fee for students who haven't yet applied. If you apply by the 1st of December and our early action deadline is November 15th, your application and all supporting documents are in by the 15th of November, then we'll get you a decision postmarked by December um, and you still have until May 1st to make your final decision. After that, we go into a session. And finally, of course, we're College of Changes Lives. You know this because we're part of the series, but I think there's a really great quote from the fourth edition um, that really talks about Eckerd being this beautiful place, this paradise. Uh, and you'll see students on longboard, no shoes, tie-dye, but don't think of it as just a vacation. I think it's also a very strong academic program for mentoring and through all the undergraduate um, opportunities. So thank you for spending time with us tonight. Jacob, thanks so much to you and Eckerd College. Our final presentation tonight will be from Lawrence University. Galen, take it away whenever you're ready. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Let me get the screen pulled up. Perfect. Uh, so my name is Galen Rose. I'm the Director of Recruitment at Lawrence University, which is located 
up in Appleton, Wisconsin. So everything Jacob just said about Eckerd and the beach and the things like that just totally apply to Wisconsin. Um, I'm just kidding. I am from Florida, right near Eckerd, actually. Uh, but our waterfront here is uh, frozen over for part of the year. So if you are looking for something to drive across as opposed to sail across, uh, this was a really awesome move for me and my family to just try something completely new. And it's often what we hear about when we're meeting with our students on the road, that they're excited about coming to such a different place um, than often where they grew up. So Lawrence University is actually made up of two different schools. So our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which is going to be kind of those majors you're usually hearing about, right? Your biology, psychology, English, economics, data science. Um, that's about 80% of our students who are gonna be receiving a Bachelor of Arts. And then on our Conservatory of Music side, we have 20% of our students who are pursuing music full-time, either in performance, theory, composition, jazz, and improv. And they're getting one of either two degrees, our Bachelor of Music or Bachelor of Musical Arts. And one of the things Lawrence is most known for is our unique five-year double degree program. So about a quarter of our conservatory students are actually doing both the college and the conservatory. And that allows them to delve really deeply into both of those things that they may be passionate about at a really high level. We have about 1,500 students coming from uh, nearly every state and over 50 countries. And together uh, with our really stellar faculty, they're at about an eight to one student to faculty ratio, which is one of the smallest in the entire country. Our average class size is only gonna be about 15 students. Uh, and because we love bragging about small numbers at liberal arts colleges, our smallest is that big one you see down at the bottom. Almost every single student at Lawrence will take advantage of the opportunity to create their own course here. So our one-on-one -on -one classes for conservatory students will of course start their very first year uh, where you can uh, have those private studio lessons. But in our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, typically that's junior and senior year when you've had enough background in your curriculum to start being a little bit more creative. I've seen classes in everything from um, giant research projects repollinating the city of Appleton to trying to understand these big questions. Like, why do I like the music I like and you like the music you like? It's different about how we grew up and where we're from and the way our ears are shaped. Um, these are real projects that our students have come up with. And our faculty are so passionate about working with our fully undergraduate student body that they love to dedicate their times to all of your individual ideas and passions. We have a number of awesome signature programs at Lawrence. And one of my favorite things, I think for many of us when we present with CTCL is how much we have in common with those small classes and those really personalized faculty members. A few things that I always think stand out, particularly at our school, is the access to what I like to call some peak performances, things that really stand at the top of when you're looking back at your college career. One of those is gonna be research. And similar to a lot of my colleagues here, we have funding for those research opportunities that go up to about $4,000 per project. So that means we've had students that have re, um, they've solar paneled our dorms. They have studied the effects of drugs on vision by doing their own brain surgery on Lawrence purchased rats um, at 19 years old. They've gone to, to Ireland to study Celtic music in the most traditional forms. And often those research projects will actually blend with study abroad. So we have about 50% of our students who would typically study abroad during their time at Lawrence. We have our own campus in London, just why you see that picture there, but access to over 50 different programs uh, all over the world. And all of your financial aid, scholarship or need-based will travel with you. So whatever it costs you to study right here in Appleton is exactly what it would cost to study in Milan or Bogota or, um, or anywhere else in the world. And then finally, internships are a huge part of our curriculum. So we want to ensure that students aren't just uh, learning what it is they want to do one day, but really doing what it is that they want to do. So our Career Service Center does an amazing job at helping our students not only find exactly what they're looking for, but often to push you and to test you 
to make sure that you are exploring all these different options that you may not have known are out there. And then of course, financially supporting you to ensure that you can take that perfect thing for you regardless of where it is in the financial situation of your family. Uh, one of the things that I was most shocked at in college, I was a first generation fully um, full scholarship student myself. I had no idea that you only spent about three hours a day in a classroom and everything else was your own time. Uh, a lot of that will be homework. And so you don't want to discount the importance of that academic experience. But for the first time, it felt like where I was learning and who I was learning with was so much more important than in my high school experience. So for us, that means, as I mentioned, those 1,500 students coming from all over the world are living right here on campus. We're fully residential. And so we have our students living in all kinds of different uh, dorms and group houses and um, frats and sororities, uh, apartment and suite style living, old Victorian homes that we give to our students, all kinds of different situations to have them right here on campus. They're going to organize their time time by uh, participating in about 150 different clubs and organizations, everything from your normal student government and newspaper to our cloud watching society, or uh, my favorite this year is recess club where they're playing kickball over the lunch hour. We have dozens of music ensembles, 22 different varsity sports, about a quarter of our students are actually varsity athletes here, and so much access to the city of Appleton, which is a metro of about a quarter million has a huge performing arts center that shows our Broadway shows downtown, all within walking distance, great restaurants, great um, places to go out and get to know the community around us. And our students are really active uh, in volunteering and connecting with the city as well. We complete um, tens of thousands of volunteer hours each year. Our uh, mayor is actually a 2013 Lawrence alum. And so there's a really, really close relationship between the city itself and our students. Suffice it to say, when you package it all together, you too will get a job one day. Um, our students are doing really well. But what I always like to chat quickly about is that they perform best on what's called the Grateful Grad Survey. So a survey that looks at um, do they feel that their jobs have meaning? Are they giving back to the world? And are they happy? And I would say for any of our colleges here tonight, that's the emphasis that we want to place. Yes, mid-career salaries are going to be high. Yes, you are going to get those awesome opportunities for Watsons and Fulbrights and going to all of those amazing grad programs. But we are going to be here to actually help you live your best and happiest life. Similar to my colleagues, we have, uh, we're on the common application. We have been testing optional since 2005, uh, but we do really recommend an interview at Lawrence. And that's simply because we love getting to know our students personally. On the conservatory side, please be sure to check out the audition information. Uh, it is available on our website and we will have options in person, live virtually, as well as self-recorded this year. And finally, Lawrence is very proud to be financially supporting our students to the very best of our ability. We are on our full speed to full need campaign where we've just raised $80 million to help support student scholarships and contribute to our larger endowment of over 400 million. Right now we're meeting the need of over 95% of our families. And so we hope no matter what your financial situation is, you'll take the time to reach out because we'd love to chat more about how we can help you with your education here. I will turn it back over to Courtney and thank you all again for being here tonight. I know it's late. I know it's been a lot of virtual time and we just really appreciate getting the chance to chat with you. Hey, Lynn, thank you so much to you and Lawrence University. If you guys promise we can do this in a lightning round, I would like the opportunity to invite you all to turn back on your cameras and share one quick thing you would like students and families to remember about your institution. So we'll go in the same order that you presented. So say, Nola, if you're up first. I would say one thing to remember is St. Olaf is a place for learners who love to learn for the sake of learning. I'll go next. I, I think that unto the whole person that Hendrix is about really learning who you are and then helping you celebrate and expand that. Okay, I'll go really quickly. <laughs> I'm just gonna feel silly. But those were great things. I almost spilled the beans. 
in addition to being pet friendly, we also have a pet commencement before our seniors graduate. So your, your pet, your furry friend can graduate from college. And maybe not Lauren specific, but you too can do something scary. You can pick up and move. You can try something new. You can go to that cold place or that hot place or that really big city or that really small town. Um, I, I am most impressed by the bravery of our students at Lawrence. And so I would encourage you um, to do the same, to really channel that in yourself. And audience, I hope that you will take a look at these wonderful professionals on the screen and use them as you have questions throughout this process. They are really here to be um, your help um, to help you through this process. So thanks so much for joining us this evening. As um, you close out, there'll be a quick five question survey. We hope that you'll provide us with some feedback. And there's more sessions just like this tomorrow. So sign up for some more sessions. And the recording of this session will be available soon at strivescan.com CTCL. Thanks so much, everyone, and best of luck with your college search. Bye-bye.